Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are talking about the twin tropical cyclones that are going to be impacting the Gulf states potentially coming up soon. Now, before we get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I would also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below where you can help support the channel. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that these two tropical cyclones will interact at all? And if so, in which ways? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look at the National Hurricane Center's cone forecast here for Tropical Depression 14, which is what was Invest 97L, or kind of uh, Caribbean storm that's going to become our Gulf storm soon. As you can see, it's expected to become a tropical storm before hitting the Yucatan Peninsula, where it'll actually uh, manage to remain a tropical storm as it crosses over. We're expecting some moderate to major impacts there for portions of the Yucatan Peninsula. That includes Cozumel and Cancun as well, where it's going to re-enter the Gulf. And here's the thing. This area is very much so known for having storms overperform the Gulf when they cross the Gulf like this sometimes the storms just very much so surprise us so if you live in Texas Louisiana even if you live in Mississippi and Alabama it's not completely out of the question I want you guys to just watch this moving forward even though we're only expected to be a tropical storm or a category one hurricane I want you to watch it you probably know if you live in those regions this one could really be a lot stronger than we think uh, so that's all I need to say about that. Just watch it in the coming days because it could be a lot more major than we're anticipating here. Uh, but we are expecting a Texas or Louisiana impact at this point. But surrounding states should also be on the lookout. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery and then eventually Tropical Depression 13, which is the other one that looks to impact the Gulf states and potentially other regions in the United States. Okay, so first things first, here is our satellite imagery for the Tropical Depression we were already looking at, Tropical Depression 14. And as you can see, it is interacting with a lot of land. The clouds, it doesn't have a lot of tall clouds right now. Uh, we are expecting once it moves back over open water here uh, in areas like, you know, in between here, Central America and the Yucatan Peninsula, it should redevelop a little bit. We're, we're expecting it actually to become a tropical storm within that time frame. And then it's going to cross into the Gulf where, again, a lot of things can happen. I've gone ahead and said boom, boom or bust with this one because it could really just maintain that strong tropical depression, weak tropical storm status. But this one really, when it crosses the Gulf, could intensify quite greatly and actually uh, surprise a lot of people, I think. Now, here's tropical depression 13, and this is our cone forecast here from the National Hurricane Center as well. Uh, and as you can see... Uh, we're expected to remain a tropical depression for a little bit. And then once we're approaching the northern side of Puerto Rico there, we're expected to cross into tropical storm status. So this should be our second of the storms to become a tropical storm. But really, either of them could become a tropical storm first. It's kind of a race for the names, if you will. Uh, but this storm is going to skirt across the northern portions of Puerto Rico. Probably bring some moderate impacts there. Same story for... Uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and the Bahamas, as well as Cuba. And then Florida. The question mark is, is it going to hit Florida and be on that northern side of the cone? Or is it really going to hit south, where it would still probably hit the Keys? So we're going to want to be on the lookout there. Now, we're also seeing here that there is a good chance this one becomes a hurricane as well. Later on in the track, around 2 a.m. on Tuesday, that's really going to depend on how much land interaction we get here. If this one hits Dominican Republic, Cuba, or maybe just Florida, uh, we are going to look for a reduced amount of intensification. But if this one crosses where it just stays over open water right there in between Cuba and Florida, look out. Because this one could intensify into a hurricane, also could become... Uh, as it enters the Gulf, it's going to be the same story here. This one could surprise a lot of people. So both of these storms could be more major than what we're anticipating. So what I'm going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for this one. And then we're going to start talking about that third Africa invest coming up. And then we're going to start getting into spaghetti model guidance and things of that nature. All right, so here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery for Tropical Depression 13 here and as you can see this one actually looks a lot better we have a very large area of tall clouds we have a little bit of that buzzsaw look and really in my opinion i think this storm looks the better out of the two and it might become our first tropical storm out of the two to be honest i'm very confident that within our tropical depression 13 and tropical depression 14 we will be talking about 
Tropical Storm Laura and Tropical Storm Marco very shortly. I think both of these storms are going to take one of those names. But really, it's a race for the names. Will this one become Laura or will it eventually become Marco? Which one's going to be Laura? Which one's going to be Marco? Uh, there's a lot to talk about, and it's going to really... That's the only difference it's going to make. Outside of that, I guess it really doesn't matter which one becomes a Tropical Storm first. Let's go ahead and take a look at that invest coming off of... Uh, Africa here, and you can see it has a 50% chance over the next five days. I didn't make a cone forecast from direct weather for this one just because there's not a lot in its path except for open water. So we're going to talk about that one on a future date, but I'll keep updating you guys on the percentage here from the National Hurricane Center on this next potential invest that we're going to be talking about. As a bonus, here's that satellite imagery of it, and it does have some quite organized tall clouds there. It's just offshore of Africa there. So we're going to need to talk about this one in a future date because it's looking actually quite organized. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for both of our tropical depressions and the intensity guidance for both of our tropical depressions. All right, now for tropical depression 14, here's the low pressure location there. And as you can see, it's just offshore there of Central America and in between Central America because it's kind of curved north already. And before it hits the Yucatan Peninsula, it should strengthen to a tropical storm, although it's not looking as good as it did last night. So we'll have to wait and see. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, it's expected to hit the Yucatan Peninsula in about 48 hours. And in about three days, 72 hours, it will be over open water there in the Gulf. The only thing that's going to keep this one from intensifying too far is that it's not going to slowly move across the Gulf. It's actually going to race across the Gulf towards Texas, Louisiana. And look, we do have a model showing a Mississippi impact too. That's why I said we can't roll that out. This one could go further east than we're anticipating. And really, with five days until, or four or five days until land impact, this one could trend west or trend east and really move further than we think. Uh, so that's why I'm keeping my, my anticipation of where this one's going to go quite wide. Now, also, here is that GEFS model here, and as you can see, this one's a little bit wider, but we do have a lot of Louisiana and Texas impacts there, as well as one Mississippi impact, just like the previous map, so it's not impossible. We could see this one go quite far east, and in that case, we would maybe see the two tropical systems interact a little bit, and that's kind of unusual, so that's why I kind of asked it for today's comment of the day. It's very unusual. Here is the intensity guidance for Tropical Depression 14. As you can see, we're expected to very soon be in tropical storm status there. There's only one model that doesn't show us in ever reaching tropical storm status, and actually it does at about hour 72. So I take that back. Every single model does show us becoming a tropical storm. As you can see, there is quite a few models also that bring us up to hurricane status there. Uh, I would say one, two, three, four models there show us reaching hurricane status, category one status. So it, it's definitely possible. Uh, I wouldn't say it's likely. I would say a strong tropical storm or lower end category one is probably the best, uh, the best bet at this point right there on that line. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about tropical depression 13 and its spaghetti model and intensity guidance, which is going to be quite interesting. All right, so here we are taking a look at the spaghetti model guidance. As you can see, a lot of these as of the 60 run this morning from the time I'm making this video, which is August 21st, as you can see, a lot of them expected to go south of Florida and not really interact. Again, there's that sweet spot right there in between Cuba, Florida. It doesn't really hit Haiti or Dominican Republic. That is the worst case scenario if it doesn't interact with any of that land because it's still going to bring those impacts on shore. So we're still getting the negative side effects of it being near land. But also, it's not going to be able to break up this storm if it doesn't hit these areas. And then we expect this one to kind of curve north after it passes Florida, potentially impacting states like Alabama, the panhandle of Florida, Mississippi. The further west this one goes, the more chance that it interacts with that other tropical depression. And yes, in case you're wondering, the, the timing of land interaction is almost identical four to five days from now. Uh, they are both expected to be in generally very close to each other. We could see these one make land, these storms, both of these, make landfall at approximately very similar times. I think out of the two, though, this one's going to impact land the last out of the two. It's just very close in timing, very, very odd. Now, let's go ahead and move on and take a look at that GEFS model. And as you can see, a few of these members have us hitting Louisiana uh, as a very strong storm as well, 989. 970 to 980 millibars, uh, and that would be very close to where this model also had 
uh, Tropical Depression 14 going. So again, I don't really know what would happen if these storms hit pretty much the same area, but it would be extremely rare and extremely interesting. And that's why I'm calling these twin tropical cyclones. I think it's a very accurate depiction. They're expected to be similar strength uh, and impact similar areas at a similar time. Very odd time in, in the weather world. Very odd anomaly here. And I'm very excited to have witnessed it. I mean, this is very interesting. Uh, and not every day you see something like this happen. Now, here's the intensity guidance. And as you can see, uh, there's actually a few models that have a struggling here. Uh, to even reach tropical storm status. I think that's not going to be the case. I think there's also this group of models here that has this intensifying quite quickly towards tropical storm status and then climbing up towards, you know, category one, two, three, four, even approaching category five. Do I think we will reach major hurricane status? No, I think uh, I have a pretty similar opinion to this one that I do for the uh, 14L, I think they're both going to be strong tropical storm weak category one. I think that's a very, very good estimate. Uh, but with both of these, I think this is a good testament of that. The potential is extremely high. And after they enter the Gulf, a lot of different things can occur. And as you can see, these models do have this one rapidly intensifying as which is possible when they enter the Gulf. So I don't want you guys to feel like this one can't be a very major storm. Same with the other one. Even though the models aren't showing it right now, it's very possible that both or either of these storms could be very major storms. Uh, and we're going to want to watch them both very closely as they are now expected to make land impact within the next five days. So they're in the forecastable range, I would say. Now here is our tropical depression 13 cone forecast. As you can see, I've kept the possibility of it land falling on the Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cuba. Also on the northern end, uh, the Bahamas are going to receive pretty major impacts from this one. I still think a Florida direct impact is possible at this point, but the most likely outcome is still that sweet spot in between where it doesn't really hit Florida, doesn't really hit Cuba, and it remains uh, a stronger storm that way. And then I think it should make impact somewhere between the panhandle of Florida and potentially even Louisiana. I've kept that very western edge available because a lot of the GEFS members have kept that as a possibility as well. Now here's our Tropical Depression 14 outlook, and as you can see, it's going to head directly north from this point basically and enter that area in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Central America where it could reach tropical storm status, and according to the models, it should reach tropical storm status, in which case it's going to hit the Yucatan Peninsula as a tropical storm, bringing moderate to major impacts there, and then re-entering the Gulf where it should still be a tropical storm, but even if it's not, it should redevelop into a tropical storm. And then it's going to be heading towards Texas, Louisiana, potentially even Mississippi, as we saw on a couple of those models as well. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next tropical disturbance will be after that Africa one, so our fourth tropical disturbance? And James Lynch said, I think our fourth disturbance will be right before the end of August. And I think that timing makes a lot of sense. So I have to say that's a quite realistic one right there. So good job, James Lynch. Now, for today's patron highlights of the day, we... Thank all of you here from Direct Weather for supporting the channel, especially Mad Birds and Mark J, our Diamond patrons, and also Donna Carnes, our Platinum patron. I thank all of you for helping support the channel. If you would like to support the channel and be on the send screen, you can do so by checking out our Patreon page in the description or the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.